So in the last episode, I told you that we needed to do something more to our phone widget. Because if we go to our movies right now, and I'm on Inception movie, and I want to add another actor. So what we want here, if I add another actor, then I want to uh, save that actor to the actors table. So if I do this, for example, John Wayne, uh, it is right here. But if I save and close this and go to Inception again, as you can see, there is no John Wayne. In this episode, I'm going to show you how you can uh, save a new actor to your actors table uh, via this form right here. And also we are going to do some debugging of our application, which we already started to do in the previous episode when we used the dump function. Uh, but in this episode, I'm going to show you how you can debug the Ajax request of your form. Because whenever you click save, as you can see, the page doesn't refresh. It actually uh, saves all of the data that it needs to in the background via Ajax. So I'm going to show you how you can debug that. Before we start doing anything, let us first break down into steps what we actually need to do. So first of all, we need to get the values. Then when we get the values, uh, then we want uh, to check out those values, see what we got and uh, compare it to the other values that we already have in our database and see if the values that we are getting are actually of numeric or of textual type. So, so we compare the values because if someone writes something in our uh, form widget, we will get the textual representation of it all of the things that already are in our actor database, actually our actor table, will just get the IDs. So they, they will be the numeric data and we will get from the name, of course, textual data. So we have to compare those values. And then if uh, we get some text uh, from our values, then we need to save that to the actor model. And after that, so when we go through all the values, we need to create a new array with new values. So whenever you create a new instance of a model, so when you add a new actor, you get the ID for that actor. And we need to put that ID into an array uh, that is going to be saved to our pivot table. So we need to get the values, compare those values, save the model, create new array, and uh, then that's about it. Then we create new array, we send that array to October and October does the rest for us. So let's see what values are we currently getting. So to do that, we will use the method called get save value. And in that function or method, we are going to pass uh, an, a variable called actors. Now we can return those actors uh, in this get save value method. So we would just do something like, right? And before that, we would do something with that data. So let's just see what we are getting here. So I'm just going to use a die and dump uh, function that comes with Laravel and October and just see what we are currently getting uh, when we save uh, our form widget. So when we save the data from the form widget. Okay, so uh, dump and die actors. Let's see what we get. So I'm just going to refresh this page. And now in our co console, in our Chrome developer tools, we go to network and you just hit this two times to record what is currently going on. And uh, for now, I'm not going to add anything right here. I'm just going to click save. And as you can see, we didn't get the message that the movie was updated because the, that function died and stopped. So nothing actually happened, nothing saved but we can see the preview of what we are getting right here with that die and dump function. So as you can see, we are getting the IDs of actors one, two, and five. Okay, so what would happen if I would add another actor right here? So John Wayne, 
and click save again. So this is our other request and if I click it, you will see that we get one, two and five and then John Wayne. Okay, so John Wayne is the only value that has some text in it. All of the others are numeric values. So what we need to do first is uh, declare a new array. I'm just going to call it new array. And this is our empty array. Now we want to go through all of the actors. So the values that we got. So these right here, we want to go through all of them and uh, check them against uh, <clears throat> some condition. In our case, that condition is going to be the, is the value numeric or not. So I'm just going to do for each. So we are doing actors as actor ID. Now we will have actor ID variable that we can check. So is it or isn't it not numeric? Now, uh, if it isn't numeric, then do something else. Else, uh, the new array is equal to actor ID. So we are uh, putting that value into our new array. So in this case, that would be one. In this case would be two. Uh, here it will be five. And uh, here it wouldn't be anything just yet because uh, we are we need to do something right here so that value isn't numeric and we are not just going to put it in our new array but we're going to do something with it first so we are going to create a new actor since uh, this value is actually a string or text we are going to create a new instance of actor model and i'm going to call it new actor so we just do new actor equals new actor. Next thing we need to add a name to that actor. So I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to hard code the name for now. So just so you can see what it, what it is actually going on. So uh, then we need the last name for that actor. And then we need to save the actor. Now that we have saved the actor, we have the ID of that actor. So we can say new array equals new actor ID. <clears throat> so as I said, we already got these values hard coded and we can just test this out to see if it works. So let's just see what we are getting from that request. So instead of uh, DD actors, I'm going to do die and dump a new array. Okay, save it. Now if we go right here, refresh the page. Now remember, whatever name I add right here, it's always going to be John Cusack because we hard coded his name right here. So I'm just going to record our request and add something. Save it. And as you can see, now we have one, two, five and six. So what is six? Six is actually John Cusack. If we go to our database and go to browse the data and check the actors uh, table, as you can see, we have added John Cusack right here. And also, if we go here and check out the actors, we should see John Cusack right here. So uh, this is the way we add new actors uh, to our actors table uh, via that uh, form widget that we created in the previous episode. Okay, let's go to movies. And now we have to do something with this so that it doesn't hard code John Cusack every time, but the actual name of the actor. Since we are getting uh, those actors uh, actually as a string representation and uh, they have a name and the last name. Name and last name will be separated by a space. So I'm just going to create another variable called name last name. And it's going to be equal to explode. 
and it's going to be using actor ID uh, variable. Okay, so what we said right here, take the actor ID uh, and everything that is separated by a space, put it in an array. So this is an array name and last name. And the first thing in that array, if we are, we are using John Cusack as an example, would be John and the second thing in that array would be Cusack. And we can actually demonstrate that if I just do die and dump right here and uh, use name and last name. Okay, save this. I'm just going to delete this new array, save it, go to our page. And if I add John Wayne, for example, and now save this, we get a request and as you can see so this is the array that we are getting so this is the name and last name array and the first thing in that array so by with number zero is John and the second thing is Wayne so right here instead of new actor name uh, John we are going to say name last name zero so that's the first thing in, in our array and for the second name or last name, it's going to be one. And then we save the actor and save the ID of that actor to our new array and then pass it out to October. So right here, I have to, instead of return actors, say return new array. And of course, get rid of this right here, because if we leave it be, uh, nothing will happen. Okay, so now we save this. Let's just refresh the page for good measure. And now let's try to add another actor and uh, I'll let it be John Wayne. And click save. As you can see, the movie is updated. If we cancel and go to inception again now John Wayne is in our actor list also if we go to actors we can see John Wayne right here and then you can go in here if you have more data and fill out that data okay so just a few things before we wrap up this video so first of all, I forgot to mention, so this new actor and uh, new actor last name, name and whatever you want to assign to it and then the save method right here, this is all pure and simple Laravel. So if you don't understand what this actually means, maybe just check out a little bit of Laravel's documentation. Another thing I want to mention, this isn't the best way to do these things uh, because uh, you can have an uh, actor with three names like Bill Bob Thornton or something like that. So you will have to account for that. And uh, usually this type of widget isn't used uh, to save the values that have uh, many parts. So like name. So the name would have first name, last name and so on. Uh, they are usually this widget is usually used for tags and tag would have only uh, one line of text and then you can compare that text to whatever text you have in the database so you wouldn't actually save the ID uh, the value wouldn't be ID it would actually be the name of that tag so maybe be careful when doing something like this but uh, this was just a demonstration of what you can do with this get save value method. So you can do whatever you want here. Once you get the data from the form uh, widget, uh, you just take that data and you can mutate it into whatever you need it to be so that it uh, will be that it will be saved to your database like you want it to. Okay, so this is it for this video. In the next video, we are going to be tackling components. So we learned how to create a form widget. In the next video, we are going to learn how to create a simple component for our plugin. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. 
if you like the content I put out, you can maybe subscribe to my channel. Also, you can follow me on Facebook or on Twitter and ask me questions there. Uh, don't forget that everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below, so you can just download that code and play with it however you like. Okay, guys, thank you for watching once again, and I will see you in the next episode.